radicals. Now let's look at it in the form of rational exponents. And rational exponent just means it's a fractional exponent. So what we want to do is kind of walk through these steps. We want to isolate the power. That's the term with the power. We want to raise to the nth power so that x or whatever is being raised to that power is to the first power. And then we want to solve. So let's look at the first one. What we want to do, we've got x to the 1 half power. And we know 1 half is really just the square root written as a rational. Okay, we want x to be to the first power. So we need to raise it to the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2 over 1, or just squared. So we're going to square the 10, and we get x to the first, right? Because we, when we raise to, when we multiply a half times 2, we're just getting 1, is equal to 100. And let's check it. Is 100 to the 1 half power equal to 10? And that is true. 10 to the 1 half is 100, so that one checks out. So our answer is 100. Okay, so let's look at one that's a little more involved. Okay, so we've got 2x to the uh, 3 halves minus 1. We want to isolate this term right here. So we're going to add 1 to both sides, and we're going to get 250. So 2x to the 3 halves is equal to 250, and then of course we're going to divide by 2. So we're going to get x to the 3 halves is equal to 125. Now, this time we've got to raise both sides to what power? Well, in order to get x to the first power, I need to raise this to the 2 thirds power. Raise to the 2 thirds power. So this becomes x is 6 to the 6, or just 1. And then the right side, I get uh, 125 to the 2 thirds. Well, let's think about what the 2 thirds power means. That means I'm taking the cube root, and then I'm squaring it. Okay. So if we need to, we can rewrite it as a radical. So remember, this is the cube root of 125. And we're taking that answer and we're squaring it. So cube root of 125 is, if you can do a factor tree, but you probably need to know those. We've talked about that. You need to have those memorized. And that is 5 and 5 squared is 25. So there is our answer, 25. Now let's go back and check it. Let's plug this in. So we have 2 times 25, this time to the 3 halves, all minus 1. So 25 to the 3 halves means I'm going to take the square root of 25, which is 5, and then I'm going to cube it. So that's going to give me 5 cubed, which is 125. So 2 times 125 is 250. And then 250 minus 1 is indeed 249. So guess what? We have a good answer. So that means uh, 25 is the solution to this one. Okay, let's look at this third one down here. Okay, we have x minus 1 all raised to the 2 fifths. If you guys want to work ahead, you know you're going to raise this to the 5 halves. And then we've got to raise 16, the other side, also to the 5 halves. Okay, we know that these are going to cancel out and just give us the power of 1. So we have x minus 1 is equal to, well, we're going to take the square root, right, of 16, and that's 4. And then 4 to the 5th power. Let's see, what is 4 to the 5th? I don't know that off the top of my head. Let's open this up and do that. Uh, 4 to the 5th power. Is 1,024. I should know that, but I don't. Okay, so 1,024. Then we're going to add 1 to solve for x, and the x is 
1,025. And again, you can take that answer, plug it back in, take 1,025 minus 1, that's 1,024. You're going to take 1,024 and raise it this time to the 2 fifths power. That means I'm taking the fifth root of that and then I'm squaring it. Well, we know the fifth root is 4 and 4 squared is 16. So that ends up checking out. So x is equal to 1,025. Okay, so let's look at a couple of these. I picked this one to show you guys because when you go to square this, what do we need to make sure we do? We want to make sure we square the right side, but we also want to make sure we square the left side and we got to square this too. So that's going to give us 4x squared is equal to 4x plus 8. And I hope you know what to do with a quadratic by now. We get it in descending order and equal to 0 because we need to do what? We need to factor it. Divide everything by 4, so we get x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. And then what multiplies to negative 2 and adds to negative 1? Uh, x minus 2 times x plus 1. So our two solutions are going to be a positive 2 and a negative 1. But as always, when, since we've especially since we've got a square root, we need to check our answers. So let's plug in 2. So let's see, the left side will give us 4. And then plug in a 2 on the right side. And we're going to get um, 8 plus 8, which is 16. Hmm, that is not a good solution. So let's check the negative 1. Negative 1. So we get negative 2 on the left side. And then on the right side, whoops, I forgot to take the square root of this one. <laughs> Sorry, that answer is 4, and that answer is good. Whoops. That is a good solution. And let's try the negative 1. Sorry, I forgot to take that negative square root. Our square root is 16. Now let's plug in this negative. So we have negative 4 plus 8, which we know is the square root of 4. Is the square root of 4 negative 2? No. So this one has one solution, and that solution is x is equal to 2. Thank you.